the AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again model car builders and welcome back to another amazing Monster Hobbies What's in the Box where we are going to look at the 1953 Ford pickup truck by AMT. And this is a nice amazing kit that you're sure to enjoy, so grab yourself a nice cold coke, crack it open, and get ready to watch this amazing video. And now we wind the clock back to 1953 as we examine our amazing Coca-Cola edition of the 1953 Ford pickup truck by AMT Ertl, brought back to you once again from round two. So we can see the nice Coca-Cola logo and uh, the Ford F-100 pickup truck includes a die-cast vending machine and dolly. Now the thing that's nice about this kit is originally these Ford trucks were produced in about 1962 or 3, somewhere back then. The customizing pieces in these kits were designed by George Barris and Gene Winfield and all those other great guys at AMT, but this is the first time it's ever come out with a Coca-Cola logo, as well as the vending machine and the cart. So if we turn the box over on this edge, we can see the nice Coca-Cola vending machine and cart that comes with this kit. They are die cast. There's our Coke truck with an alternative decal on the side. There's in fact three versions you can build out of this. The uh, long end of the box has that nice Nice artwork, actually. It's sort of like, uh, well, like great old American artwork. Saturday evening post style. All right, that's what I was trying to think of. And these are the features of the kit. You get a detailed bed and a positional fold-down tailgate with these chains. The original wheels from the 60s, the hubcaps, have come back in this issue. Uh, you also get these pre-painted white walls and the factory wheels and then of course our stock Ford flathead V8 and then of course we get into this this side of the box is the same thing again and so now all we need to do is open the lid and see what's inside all right so let's pull the lid off this thing and see what we got Ooh, the suspense okay there we go I'll just put the lid over there for a moment and I'm going to move the parts off to over here and now here's our instructions. So as you can see this time around we get that nice white Ford pickup truck that shows the Coca-Cola six-pack, the old glass six-pack and if you look you can see the uh, Coca-Cola man with the bottle cap hat and the nice thing I like about my brand new overhead camera stand is that you can actually open up these instructions and see what they all look like. So let's see here. Okay, let's turn this around. And here, let's just zoom in a little bit. All right, there we go. There you go. Okay, how about... Well, bear with me, folks. Right there. So, here we actually have two different types of engines. There is the stock Ford Flathead V8, which was quite a good engine, 53. Which is one of the largest cubic inch displacements of the Ford Flathead. And then if we look over at this panel, you can see that we get a... I do believe it is a DeSoto Fire Dome. Uh, anyway, you get your choice of eight carburetors, eight single barrel carburetors with these nice chrome plated air cleaners in them, or the optional fuel injection on this unit, which makes it really nice. So you actually get really a choice of three engines, depending on how you build it. And now round two has included these letters here that correspond with paint codes, just the same way that Ravel and Monogram does with their kits. So that's pretty helpful, although you have to refer to a paint chart. Anyway, here are those nice wheels. Uh, 
Now there are some optional wheels in this which we'll get into a little later, but there's the original spinner hubcaps come back, the uh, custom ones of course, and then our factory steel wheel with a little Ford hubcap and a, the old Firestone style tires with a wheel back. And then over here we have the vending machine here. It says research online for more classic color combinations. Although they say white, white top and the red, and there's many different ways these were painted back in the day, as well as our dolly for carrying in more uh, six packs of Coke into, of course, the vending machine, or you can actually have the vending machine strapped to the dolly as if it's being delivered. So now we get into the parts that make up the standard 53 Ford here. So there's your frame, your springs, the rear bumper bracket mounts, the differential, the drive shaft, your front axles with the brake backings. You get the optional um, rear exhaust pipes as well. And then there's where your spare tire mounts on. Just like the real thing, only smaller, <laughs> as they say. And then here you can see, of course, our bench seat and the floor panels. And then that's going up to our chassis there. And you get the shock absorbers in the front and the front bracket mounts. You have a floor shift option for the custom. Because here, as you can see, is our, oh, there we go, our dashboard and they have the column shift mount on there. So you could leave that off for the floor mount. You get two choices of steering wheels. This is sort of like a jet aircraft when they cut the top and bottom off. It tells you how to paint the little Ford logo that's on here. There's your horn going in, radiator, and then uh, this goes up underneath. There's a speaker, that's for the custom version. And now we'll just flip over here. So they really give you three different options here, which is typical of the 53 Ford pickup truck. Here is the stock out of the factory version, the stock fenders gluing up to the pickup box, the bumper, this is chrome, although I have seen these painted white. So there's an alternative to you, which would look nice on the red truck actually. Um, your tailgate, and then these little tailgate side pieces glue in. So you can actually, that, that's how you hook up your tailgate. There's two little pins there, and then these other ones latch up into here. Uh, and you can actually glue the, the chains <laughs> from the top down to keep your tailgate open. The gas filler cap. Now the little spout back here is supposed to be painted body color or black or something. I do a little research on that one. And then the next option you get here is the service option. So this is the bigger mirrors on the sides, air horns, the um, little indicator lights, the extra red tail lamp here, because they only had one in the day. Um, the bumper with the holes in it, the overriders, your tool set, a oxyacetylene, oxyacetylene? Gas welding. <laughs> Yeah, oxyacetylene. And then of course your fire extinguisher and your jack with the crank on there. And then they have the custom version. Now here, they don't quite show it, but this is how it really exists. This is known as the Wildcat Grill. And then this is a tube grill with canted headlights. Sort of Chrysler made that um, very popular back about 1962. Uh, there's the rear taillights. Now they don't say it on here, but I have found in other earlier instruction sheets that these are actually Mercury taillights from the 49 Merc, and they fit around the, the actual stock bumpers. Then there's these optional bumpers. These ones are like uh, 55 Chevy Cameo type bumpers, and they have an insert that's sort of Corvette style. Really cool. The rolled pan underneath here. A tailgate that doesn't say Ford, it's completely flush. Then of course you got a different style filler cap, sort of like a knockoff uh, hubcap type of thing. Your lake pipes go up onto the sides here. A tonneau cover that you can actually crack and they give you these little struts in here so you can sort of like have the back end of it open. And what else is on here that's cool? 
think that's about it. Oh yeah, there's the, the club plaque goes on here, although they don't really show you what it is. So, And then to finalize off our instruction sheets here, there's all the color callouts with all the letters to what they refer to. So P is orange. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> okay, N is for red. K is gold. I is steel. You know, and you get the idea. Then it says common colors often used for the exterior include raven black, Sheridan blue, glacier blue, wood smoke gray, timberline green, and many other colors. Custom colors may also be used to provide a creative alternative for the custom version. So AMT's gone through a bit of uh, research there for you. And as you build your cool Coca-Cola Edition 53 Ford pickup truck, um, again, you have many different options. So now let's go and look at the parts as well as our decal sheet. So the first part we're going to be looking at is our body here. And this is a great rendition of the 53 Ford pickup truck cab part of it. Now, it's molded in white, so it might be a little hard to pick up, but you can hear. Ooh, there's a uh, nice mesh in here for your radiator. Um, now, whoops. <laughs> If we uh, look underneath here, you'll see these buttons. Now, I, I would suggest removing these with a the number 16 hobby blade, which is the one I'm holding right here. There's two injector marks here and here, uh, mold marks actually, that will interfere with your frame alignment. So again, you can remove them by scraping them with a the number 16 hobby blade, or in fact, you could use a sanding block here, sandpaper block. Actually, this would be a better way to do it. Go in here and sand those out. Now you can notice there's more of those mold marks down in here and here. Oops, there we go. You can see them right by the manufacturer's mark underneath here. And those ones you cannot get the sanding block in there, so you will need your number 16 blade to scrape them down. Okay, but that being said, I don't know if you can see this too well. Yeah, tilt it into the camera. So there's some nice engraved molding in here with the window winders. There's a little notch where your dashboard's gonna hook into there. And now there's the part on the body for your gas filler cap. It's got the little door locks and keys for it. Windshield wipers molded to the body the little side vent here. Is there one on the other side? No, see there's not one on the other side. So this might have been a fresh air intake or something for the a heater. Now you'll notice that there's a bit of flash on here and again you can remove that with your sanding block and remember to get your, your um, seam lines removed with the number 11 hobby blade. This is a very bad version of a number 11 hobby blade. I need to replace them. But yeah, you can see some flash around here. That's a little hole for the rod for the hood. No, the horn. The horn, yes. Uh, nice engraving in here for the era. It's got all the um, nuts and bolts inside there on the fender wells. So some very good detailing on here. And uh, if you're adding in those antennas, you'll probably need to drill a hole under here. So I've got my drill there, just somewhere in there. Anyway, let's move the body out of the way. Here is the pickup truck bed. And again, we've got those mold marks down in here. There we go. Just got to get the camera angle right with the white plastic. There's some nice wood graving paneling in there with the raw, the rails, pardon me. These will look good with uh, bare metal foil on them. You'll need to snip off this with some side cutters and again use your sandpaper. That nice wood grain goes underneath, which there's no mold marks under here. And uh, this is the part you're going to see underneath the frame. The two little pins there and some sunken down bits here and here. 
I do believe you, uh, you dig those out for your bumper brackets. And then we have our frame here. Once again, this is nice. These little wings are part of the inner fender aprons for back there on the body. You get your gas can and this would be your battery box. Some very nice uh, rivets and detail in there. A little hard to see. Sorry, white plastic is very hard to film. <laughs> Apologies. And then be careful clipping that out right there because that's on your frame rails. Uh, and you will need some sandpaper and your hobby files just to remove those once you clip them off or saw them off actually be a better way to do it. Next up we have our nice 53 Ford hood. There's the stock bumpers without the holes in them and this is your tie rod end for underneath. Now if I tilt the hood up there you can see that emblem. Oops, get my hand back a little shadow doesn't help hurt. You can see there is the Ford emblem that they were talking about in the instructions and the hood ridge. And if we turn this upside down, you'll actually notice a bit of a texture under here. And then of course there's our mold buttons. And this is a little tab that sticks up for that spring for your hood. And under our bumpers we have the, the mounting locations and some more of those mold marks, which again you can remove with your number 16 hobby blade just by carefully getting in there and uh, cross scraping. And as you can see, once we clip our hood off, it does fit nice and tight into the front of the truck. Now we have the custom rear fenders. These are the, of course, 55 Chevy step side pickup truck style with the Corvette style inserts in there. Then we have our front grill area, the bench seat, the two piece rear axle, the front suspension, the leaf springs and the steering column, shock absorbers, and these neat little raising blocks, what they were I think. Uh, as we turn this over you'll notice again there's some of those Oops. There's some of those mold marks, which again need to be taken out. There's some in there too. Uh, the leaf spring detail is quite nice on the front or underneath sides, whatever side this is. And uh, so there's your components there. Here's our sprue for our engine components. You actually get two engines on here. This one here, which is the Ford Flathead. And of course this one here, which is our DeSoto Fire Dome. So let's talk about the flathead Ford components first. As you'll notice, the oil pan is molded in place on the engine block halves. When you glue these together, allow your glue to dry and then sand out your seam lines. Um, so yeah, this is because this is all going to be painted that Ford gray-green kind of color. The uh, flathead engine components are here, so you got your two radiator hoses, your fan, your cylinder heads, the intake manifold, uh, the exhaust crossover piece, there's one of the exhaust pipes there, your oil filter, your carburetor, your fuel line, and there's your pulleys there. And then on the DeSoto fire, oh, your your uh, air cleaner here for the stock engine. And then we get into our DeSoto fire dome. So there is the intake fuel log for the individual carburetors, the engine block there, the crossover style um, radiator hoses, your water pump front cover, your fan belts, there's your exhaust pipes there. And here's the cylinder heads. These are the fuel injection um, intake components. And then there's your license plate sh shroud and your rear tail lights. 
Next up we get into our stock wheels and here you can see the nice steel wheels there. You get five, one for the spare tire. These little rods here are actually plastic axles if you don't feel confident using the metal ones provided. Although I would say to use the metal ones because the plastic ones have a tendency to bend a little bit under the weight of the vehicle. The fire extinguisher, the scissor style jack, and there's the jack handle and crank. These are your rear brake drums. Now there's front brake drums here but they broke off in the box so I'll show those in a minute. There's your stock steering wheel, and then I'll just turn these over so you can see the wheel backings here have a raised bit which will drop into there to fit tightly on the Firestone tires once we uh, assemble the whole thing together. And you notice a nice little hand grip detail on the back of the steering wheel. You'll be able to see that through the windshield. And here's the stray parts from our parts box, the things that kind of broke off the parts tree and rattled around in there. So here we have our Ford stock tailpipe. This has got the bend in it to get around the rear differential and to come out to the back of the vehicle. Here we have the magneto for the DeSoto fire dome. These are the rear brake drums. There's a tall collar right here on this one. This is the back side of the brake drums. And then this is the front side of the brake drums where the wheel is going to go in. And then these wheel backs here, they're for the Baby Moon hubcaps, which we'll see on a chrome tree. These are not included in the instruction sheet, but if you have some of the older instructions from AMT and whatnot, you will know that these are in fact valuable wheels for the custom version. And they've got these little buttons on this side. <laughs> anyway, there are no tires for these wheels in the kit, but I've built this many a time and this is the actual tire here. These are the Goodyear Polyglass GTs. Um, they're a wide tire and you can see that tread pattern there. There's usually a web in here, but this one has been cut out. This is from my parts box, and these will in fact fit on there and be the right height for the moon hubcaps. So if you've built models over the years and you have these kicking around, that's your tire for it. Uh, if you are new to model building and you want these, keep these in your parts box. Uh, the more models you build eventually from AMT, the more models you build from AMT, eventually you will come across these things in droves. I've got like 70 of these, you know, sets of these tires, so they are out there. Anyway, that is your little tip of the week for these tires. And now here is a smaller parts tree. We have our dashboard. And there's some really nice detail in this instrument panel here. I know it's white plastic, it's very hard to see. Anyway, trust me. <laughs> uh, here we have our distributor cap for the Flathead Ford. There's our horn. These are the um, tailgate components where you're going to put your tailgate and have it latch up here. And these bottom holes are for your tail lights. Then this is the rolled pan for the rear of the truck. And here, they don't show these in any of the instructions. This came out a little bit later on, but this is in fact a mesh style grill insert, which would uh, go in, and you could have this without any of the headlights or anything like that. Or you could glue this in and then put those canted uh, headlights with the grill bar in, just as a backup thing. And here's our sprue for the service truck, as well as many of the other truck components. There's our drive shaft, our service bumpers with the holes in it, bumper brackets, the brace for the spare tire which hooks up underneath, our exhaust pipes for the stock version, as well as the additional stock style muffler here for the custom. There's our two-way CB radio. Here's our smooth tailgate. The oxyacetylene tanks and two components. That there is the little tail light for the service truck. And then we have our firewall here. 
And now I'm just going to turn this over so you can see a bit of the detail. Let's turn it around as well. Okay, so here we have our radiator and it's also got the fan shroud on there. And then again you'll notice the sinkholes mold marks on the tailgate. Those will have to be smoothed out with your sandpaper. There's some nice gauge detail on the oxyacetylene tanks. And again, we've got these buttons pretty much everywhere, but it's again the vintage of the kit and the way it was designed in the mold. Now we'll look at our final white part tree. This one is a little bit longer than I've got room accommodated on my camera stand. <laughs> but anyway, there is the stock fenders. Here's all our little tools molded on there as well as the floor pedals and a license plate. Now here we've got our tailgate. This is the stock version with the two little bars in here and then Ford punched in on this side. The tonneau cover and then here we have our interior with the running boards and you can see this nice paneling in there. There's a gas pedal, a couple nice rivets in there, and these little things here are where the bench seat fits in. And then we can turn this over. And now, again, we've got the mold marks, much like on the stock or the custom version. And then here you can see the Ford lettering is actually sunk in. Then, of course, we've got there. There's two pins here for aligning your front fenders on and our tonneau covered. Now there's that crack that's right there. You can take your number 16 hobby knife and just push it down here and there and then you can open this and bend it up a little bit. There's the little mounting points for those gas struts that would be holding this up. And then if we look here on our upside down of the running boards. There again is some of those mold marks and same on the tonneau cover which will have to be removed with your number 16 hobby blade. But again some very nice detail. There is a bit of a texture under there which you can see up through the bottom of the frame when you turn this upside down. And here's my favorite component of all, the chrome tree. So right here we have that nice wildcat grill. There's our four carburetors actually eight carburetors. Uh, the service lights there. There's our stock grill. Uh, the gas knockoff thing. <laughs> the Ford hubcaps, the stock ones, our air horns. The intake cover for the DeSoto Fire Dome. There's the chrome valve covers. The chrome oil pan, pardon me. The two chrome air cleaners, those are the Baby Moon wheels, hubcap wheels we're talking about that fit the uh, Goodyear polyglass tires here. The custom floor shifter, the gas struts for the tonneau cover, mercury tail lights, the uh, mirror, the club plaque, the steering wheel, the two chrome shock absorbers, the welding torch. There's the uh, alternator for the Chrysler engine, the bumperettes for the front, the grill, the speaker grill. Then we've got our Chrysler inspired front grill there, the lake pipes, and then I'm just going to turn this over so we can see some of the other details here. Ah, uh, where did they go? Somewhere around here, I think these are them. Those are chrome plated, they're the tail lights that are going into here. I never realized that until this model review actually. But you're supposed to paint the top of these with, like to me, a clear red. And then scrape the chrome off of there, on this side, and then glue them in with the chrome and the rear, the <laughs> red tail light I should say. So as you can see, there is, let's just turn this back here. There is some nice detail into that chrome grill and a 
there's the stock Ford grill. Again, there's a mesh molded in here, which is some really fine detail work. There's our uh, the Soto Fire Dome chrome plated valve covers. Woo! And uh, the Baby Moon hubcaps, as well as the Mercury tail light, custom Mercury tail light uh, bezels, I guess. Our lake pipes here. You know, nice detail on all of this. Even the Chrysler has a bit of mesh inside the headlights, so as to give it some very nice detail. So again, one of my favorite chrome pieces. So I thought I'd show these two together because they're really small parts trees. These are the re-released hubcaps that were in the original model kit of this back in the 1960s. And it's nice to see them return. As you can tell here, they have some nice detail to them. And then putting that down, here we have our windshield. And this is a very clear one. It was well packaged in the box. There's no scratches in it, which are uh, sort of a bane of earlier AMT kits of this truck. A nice rear glass. This will pop up underneath very nicely. Here you have the larger headlights for the stock version, and then they give you the four smaller headlights for the custom. Included in this kit are five tires, one for the spare, of course, and they are all printed with this nice white wall, which is a bonus from the factory, from AMT, I should say, round two. I've turned this tire upside down so that you can see the Firestone lettering printed on here. Now, if you want to build a plain Jane type truck, you turn the white walls to the inside. Some of the hot rodders actually turned the white walls to the inside to have the black wall tire as well, which is kind of weird since you wanted to pay for the white walls. But there, there you can see the white wall in the center. So these are very nicely done on behalf of round two. And the final components in this model kit are the metal bits, which include the two axles and the hood hinge. Now you may be wondering why this looks so strange here. I'm leaving this in the bag for obvious reasons of it getting lost. So anyway, you get the two metal axles and our metal hood hinge. And now, here's our amazing decal sheet, which allows you to build three different versions of the Coca-Cola truck, as well as the vending machine. So here we have our circular delicious Coca-Cola decals. Uh, you can use these on a yellow version of the truck, or a white version, if you want. Then we have the little Mr. Coke Man with these, his Coca-Cola bottle cap hat little tiny coca-cola decals here for a vending machine you get quite a few different license plates and coca-cola logos as well as this delicious refreshing one here then there's some white coca-cola lettering this would go on a red truck and then uh, 10 cents this is all part of the vending machine here so there's the controls for the vending machine uh, the coin slot and whatnot, and then of course Coke logos with a bottle and a hand, little round tiny ones. So I'm actually going to use the 53 Ford pickup truck, the stock version that came up before this, not a Coca-Cola one, and I'm going to build a display showcasing three trucks, one stock, one custom, and one as a service vehicle for Coca-Cola. So it'll be quite a cool little diorama. Now let's look at the actual vending machine and the cart. Now here's our final look at the components in our Coca-Cola truck. These are the special pieces, of course. Our red dolly for carrying around the Coke vending machine, and of course the Coke vending machine. Now on the dolly, there are some black wheels. They need a little bit of cleanup as there are some mold release marks on the wheels themselves from when it was attached to the parts tree. So you're gonna to have to refine those a little bit with some sandpaper. I've added in this Fujimi figure here so you can get a sense of the height of the Coke machine. 
She'll be uh, good in some dioramas. She does not come with a kit, but sometimes AMT does have a few of these figures lying around in various models. So just look out for people. It's always a good thing. Uh, now, there's two versions of this shown on the box art. One has the vending machine masked off here. The door and this little door are white, but the bottom part here, about there, is red. And then the red continues up the side to about here and comes across. And the second version that they show has this door here and everything below it painted red and just the top portion is white. And uh, you can also look up various other ways that they had these Coke vending machines back in the day by checking them out on the internet. Now, these are the decals that will go on the Coke machine. These are the tiny ones that are included on the decal sheet. These hands with the Coke bottles would, of course, go somewhere on the side here. Uh, then we've got, like, decals that say, Yes, Coke, and Have a Coke. And these ice-cold ones would, of course, go along the bottom of the machine, somewhere in there. And uh, here is a Heva Coke, which would be somewhere down there. This is the controls for the vending machine, so that's your coin, uh, coin drop and everything, and those would go somewhere on here. So no matter how you build your vending machine, it should turn out to be a very nice addition to your pickup truck. And that completes our review of the Coca-Cola Edition AMT 1953 Ford pickup truck. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing unboxing video where we got to look at the 1953 Ford pickup by AMT Ertl with the amazing vending machine where you can get yourself a nice Coca-Cola. All right, so I want to let you guys in on a little secret. Coming soon, I will take these two models off this shelf, move everything down a couple of shelves, and I'm gonna build a really cool diorama in here featuring all three versions of this coca-cola truck so that'll be really cool look for a video where i'm going to show you guys how to build your own and don't forget to like subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family pound that notification bell so that every time i make a new video you are the first ones to see it and until next time happy model building